اهلا وسهلا فيكم ويلكم باك اليوم بدي اعمل فيديو عن شيء ثاني انتم عارفين اني كنت اشتغل بمكتبي بفلسطين فيعني اكيد بحب اقرا عن مواضيع فلسطينيه فاليوم بدي احكي عن كتبي المفضله عن فلسطين فعندي كتب معي اولا هاب اسمه خربة خزة ل اس يزهر اسمه ابري فمش عارف كيف اقوله المهم اوكي من هلا راح احكي بالانجليزي uh, this book is uh, was published right after the 48 war also known as the Nakba and uh, it's the story it's fi- it's fiction but it's about a, you know some true events and it's the story of an Israeli soldier who is sort of struck between following orders and you know following his conscience it's kind of an old story but uh, what's interesting about this is because it was published so early on when sort of zionism was still being very contested you know in the sense of like what does it mean so because this was published like right after the nakba um, it's an interesting perspective because it was so early on in the development of, of zionism or at least the state of israel because it was basically when it began um people and by people i mean israelis were sort of a lot more receptive to this kind of narrative where today idf is the, the idf i mean is so sort of lionized um here you get a lot of tension internal tension that you don't get in accounts today um and so actually the little blurb explains uh, thousands of israelis rush to read it critics began to argue about it and a Palestinian journalist in Nablus described it as a sign that the Israeli army had a conscience and that peace was possible. I mean, I'm much more skeptical about any brother that would claim something like that today. But uh, at the time, I mean, I could see why something like this would make a big impact because, you know, this was also this was like right after the Holocaust, you know. So if people's collective mem- I mean, if you know, if you're there and it's like, oh, the Holocaust was literally like four years ago or something like that, you know, like, it's going to be a lot more salient, the comparison between the, you know, expulsion of the Palestinians from their villages and their homes and all that stuff with what had happened in Europe. So I think that that was in part why people were so sort of receptive to it, whereas today the Holocaust is so sort of, like, untouchable. Um, and it like you can't like compare it to anything or like discuss it in a it's weird because you almost like can't discuss it in a historical context or anything like that like it's just you know I don't even I don't even bring it up anyway uh, as for this book uh, I recommend it I mean it's very short no excuse not to read it um, again it's called Khirbet Khize I kitab illi al economist sami astonishing yeah so you get you know narratives of like the you know direct encounters between the soldier and like the the, so, the villagers that he was sort of um, expelling you know with his teammates and how his teammates were kind of like pressuring him and he was like is this right like this feels kind of screwed up so I mean it's worthwhile I, I mean it's almost like um, canonical uh, in terms of like Israeli Palestinian sort of conflict literature so that's Khirbet Khize Next we have Swad Amiri with her book Sharon and my mother-in-law. Sharon being uh, the Prime Minister of Israel um, way back when. And uh, this book is cool. It's very light-hearted actually. Uh, the subtitle is Ramallah Diaries because it's basically compiled from what was like a series of emails that she had written to like friends who were living abroad while she was in Ramallah. Um, I mean she's Palestinian. I don't know if those friends were Palestinian or not, I don't remember, but the point is that she sort of narrates like all these historical events, like the, you know, like the siege of Ramallah, but even, I mean, she starts from like the 80s, um, the 70s even, and um, so she narrates them all, but sort of in a kind of lighthearted way, I mean, it's lots of like anecdotes, like, oh, you know, like she talks about how she was like trying to take her dog to the vet and how the dog has... A Jerusalem ID but she doesn't so like she needs a permit to go to Jerusalem but the dog doesn't I mean you know stuff like that like it's sort of like it really sort of spins the the whole 
uh, occupation in a to, to sort of show the absurdity of all of it because it is absurd. I mean, it is absolutely absurd in an almost funny way, just because of the absurdity. I mean, that that that's what she sort of recuperates from all of that, and I think it's worthwhile. So, I mean, maybe not what most people think of as a beach read, but I mean, I think of it that way. I mean, it's like you know, kind of lighthearted and easy to read. It's not very long. Um, and it's just anecdotes and like fun stuff, um, and hey, maybe you'll learn a bit of history if you if you're sort of new to these topics. So I recommend this one. It's very sort of entry level. It's nice. It's a good book. She has another one called uh, Golda Slept Here. I haven't read that one though, but um, I probably will because it's nice. So next we have this book that is called Palestine, A 4,000 Year History by Noor Masala. And uh, this one just came out in paperback. I think it was originally published last year or maybe even 2018 actually. Um, and um, as the title implies, it's basically an overview, like a survey of all of the history of Palestine, like even basically since that historical concept was sort of invented when but even the name Palestine was still like Peleset and these other sort of similar proto-Palestine names but what he's trying to point out is that there's always been a like conception of this area as its own entity with its own identity um, and and the reason that might not seem that radical but what's important about that is that that's something that's trying to that is kind of getting erased by Israelis and Israeli historians and sort of the hegemonic opinion makers because they're saying that like, oh, well, there was never anything, any such thing as Palestine, it was just the Ottoman Empire or it was just uh, like the Egyptian, uh, whatchamacallit, or whatever. I mean, they just make stuff up basically. Um, and like archeologists, Israeli archeologists, just like t totally just basically make stuff up and obscure Palestinian history. So what this does is it recuperates all that and um, from the very start. So I, I think this one is really good if you want more of Palestinian history from sort of before Zionism and like before the 18th or, you know, 17, uh, 19th century Ottoman Empire Palestine, uh, which is sort of the beginning of modern Palestine. That's usually what, like people don't think too much far back before that. Um, so this is so this is very nice. Um, it's kind of the first of its kind that that sort of does it in such an accessible way. So I think this is a great opportunity. Um, for example, I mean, I I learned a lot. I uh, one of the things that I thought was really interesting was how important uh, Gaza was in classical antiquity. I didn't know that. I mean, I thought well, I knew that Gaza was important historically, like in general as a city, but um, you know, as for like older history, I didn't really know that much. I just know that they have some like historical buildings and mosaics and sort of like um, Greek or like Byzantine presence, but I didn't know how important it was in terms of like, it has like a big library, like almost like Alexandria, like the second biggest I think it was. Um, I don't know, I, I you know, like today it's so hard to, like you can't even Google Gaza without the first million hits being about rockets. Which is, uh, you know, we ought to know about that. But, um, you know, it's also important to, like, celebrate why we're fighting for this. You know, why this is important to protect, you know? Because there is such a deep history and there's real people whose heritage this is. So I think this is an awesome book. Um, yeah. Next, we have this book. It's called The Impossibility of Palestine by. Mehran Kamrava. It doesn't seem to be an Arabic name based on the fee, but it doesn't say where the author's from. It's published by Yale, and um, this book is a really good introduction to the two-state solution, uh, rather the impossibility of it, the non-viability of it, um, because the thing is that that's something that is pretty much well accepted among people who like study and discuss Palestine. Um, you know, the two-state solution is sort of a mirage, really, of the Israelis. Well, and you know, some Palestinians, you know, and Fatah, you know, kind of plays along with it. Uh, you know, oh, you know, we're going to build our state and everything. 
But Israel has, and that's what this book is talking about. This Israel has sort of put all the obstacles in place ever possible to prevent that from ever happening, even though they talk about it. Oh, this thing turned on. So that's basically what he discusses, like why the two-state solution is um, not really possible anymore. Um, you know, like settlements is sort of the most obvious thing. Um, but he goes, he starts basically from 48. Uh, so this is definitely a book about the, the modern situation, but it's a really good entry point for that. There's another book that's similar that's called The Two-State Delusion. Uh, I recommend one or the other, really. I, I mean, I read this one, and I really liked it, so I recommend this one. Um, but they're, they, they're both kind of about this similar topic. Again, very good introduction. Uh, he talks about geography. He talks about, like, state building. Uh, he also talks about the failures of, uh, like, Fatah and, like, the sort of Palestinian Authority. Um, and that's also important to discuss because in a lot of ways they have collaborated with the Israelis and this is not controversial. I mean, well, rather this is not something that is not widely believed by a lot of Palestinians on the ground that Fatah is kind of problematic. But you know, a lot of the time it's because of how the Israelis have very cunningly, um, you know, negotiated with Fatah. So, and he talks about all that. So again, this is, this will leave you very well informed. Um, and I highly recommend it, as I do all these books. Last, but, well, not least, but this one is really just for fun. I just thought it was interesting. Um, not necessarily recommending it, but I am currently reading it, and um, it's uh, by Haymarket, so you know it's good. It's called The Palestine Communist Party, 1919-1948, Arab and Jew in the Struggle for Internationalism. And, uh, you know, I picked this up because it's something that I had never heard of. I did not know that that was a thing. I know that there was the PFLP, um, well, there is, but I did not know that there was a Communist Party. But as it turns out, see, what's interesting is that Palestine, I mean, before, like, Israel was founded, um, it was, like, even Jews were calling it Palestine who were moving there. So this is actually a bit of a... Well, it's not a misnomer, but it's. I thought that this was like Palestinian as in Arab, but it's actually geographically Palestinian Communist Party. So it's actually, it was founded by Jews. And like most of its ranks were Jews for a long time. They had this whole struggle with like Arabization where they saw their, like they were against nationalism as communists tend to be, but they were, you know, like they were against Zionism but then the majority of the party was Jews and they had kind of, they tried to incorporate a lot more of what they saw as their base, which was Arabs, but it was very fraught. They were having trouble getting support from Arabs, but then they were also getting having trouble getting support from Jews because they were against Zionism, basically. So they were always kind of, you know, messy and I wouldn't, it seems thus far, I, have, I mean, I haven't finished, but it seems like it wasn't really that successful. Um, I thought it was going to be like a romance of American communism kind of book, but it's not. It's um, also very um, academic. But you know, I mean, it's interesting. Again, something I had never had any idea about, so it's always nice to learn something new. If it's a topic that interests you, check it out. Um, otherwise, read a summary. But uh, yeah, and Haymarket Books, gotta love them. So that's all I got for now. Thank you for uh, sitting with me. And uh, another video soon about, uh, actually about Palestinian Arabic. Um, but I don't know, I mean, someone was asking me about my books because they thought they were interesting, so I thought I would make a little video. Maybe in the future I'll make other videos just kind of talking and um, stuff like that. But definitely, definitely a lot more videos about Palestinian Arabic very soon. So, have a nice day.